In the last tutorial, I showed you how you can use Foundation 4 Reveal.js to add a modal to your site. And we were using the contact form as an example. Now, this form works. We can fill it out and make a submission. But when we click submit, we get a page refresh and the form disappears. And we don't get any indication of whether the form was successfully submitted or not. And also, when we open up a new form, then we get the response message, the feedback, saying, thank you, I'll get back to you soon. But this really doesn't make sense, because what if we want to have a new message, and really, this response message should be showing immediately when we hit send, as soon as the server knows whether it's an error or a success, right? So... What we want to do is actually use some jQuery to do this asynchronously in the background. And that way we can submit this form without having to do any sort of page refresh. So the first thing we want to do is actually go into the markup and add some classes and IDs to the form and these success and error messages so that we can manipulate them with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hop into our contact form include here and scroll down the form itself now I'm gonna give this form an ID and we're gonna use this to intercept the submission with jQuery and then any other things we may need to do to this form throughout the course of the submission process so I'm gonna give it an ID of contact form Next, I'm going to also add a class to these divs which are being rendered conditionally, whether it's a success or an error. So I'm just going to call these uh, form feedback. So I know what to look for in the response body. I'll just copy and paste that down here. Now that we have some nice selectors in place, I'm going to hit save on this file and create a file in our JavaScript directory called app.js. Now within app.js, I have access to jQuery because that's already been included in this blog theme by default. And I'll start off by just writing the standard kind of document ready function. This will make sure that all the HTML is in place before this JavaScript executes. Now we'll start by just selecting the contact form where we just added the ID to in the HTML. And we will go ahead and listen for the submit event. And jQuery just has this submit method which lets you do just that. And within that, we'll call a function on the event. And I'm just going to use E as a shorthand. You'll often see it written this way. And the first thing we'll do inside that function is prevent the default submission event. So just E.preventDefault will make sure that that form doesn't get submit. So I'm going to go ahead and test that out. Uh, before I do that, I should probably close out this parentheses here and hit save. Now let's hop over into our preview URL and uh, let me just hit refresh here. Actually, we should refresh in the URL bar here or else the form will get resubmit. And let me uh, try filling out this form again. And I'll just do this really quickly here so you don't need to wait for me. And let me click send. And you may not be able to see it, but I'm clicking send several times here and absolutely nothing is happening. So we know our jQuery is working correctly. It's preventing the submission. So now let's go ahead and make the actual post request. We'll start by just caching the uh, form itself and giving it a nicer variable so we can refer to it. This will just be basically this uh, contact form ID right here. Just uh, referring to that in a nicer way. and we'll go ahead and use the jQuery post method to make the form submission asynchronously. And the jQuery API to do this is actually fairly simple. Basically, we just need to pass in the URL of the location we want to make the request to. 
and in this case um, this could be any number of locations because we could be wanting to send it from the about page or from the blog page or maybe even from one of the blog articles itself so let's go to this blog article here and there we can pull up our contact form so the URL would be this really long URL right so we can't really hard code it in because we don't know what it's going to be so that part needs to be dynamic and um, there's actually a really great way of doing that um, using the uh, document API in the browser and basically if we go back into app.js we can just pass in um, document.location.url and that will just grab the current location from the URL bar in the browser and pass that in as the target for our request. Now the next thing we need to pass in is the data itself and we can get at that by doing um, just dollar this and calling serialize on it and basically what this does is it just collects the submission the form values from the submission from the email the name and the message and puts them together in a string and which is what the server is looking for so now that we have a location and the data from the form um, the server should be happy with that and we need to start thinking about what we need to do with its response so this is where the callback comes into play in this post method so um, we just pass a function into here and it will be acting on the data uh, the data is basically just going to be a fully formed HTML page basically the exact same page you're at except it also has the either the error or submission div in it, right? The one that we added those classes to a couple minutes ago. So basically we want to start by parsing out that feedback itself from that whole response. So we just want that one little div that we gave those classes to. So we'll start by creating a variable and first off just creating a div. And this div isn't on the document yet, it's just kind of living in, in the JavaScript memory, the runtime and then we'll fill that div with the data and the data is HTML so we're basically saying take that data that HTML that was sent back and fill this div with it so now we have this div which is basically the div the entire page right and now that we have jQuery we can just this is what jQuery does it looks through a document and selects something so we can use the regular jQuery methods on this little snippet that we have in memory and just call find on it and pass in the form feedback class which will either be the success or the error message so now this feedback variable just holds that little div of the form feedback because since we've called find on that big blob so the next thing to do is just to append that feedback to the form well in this case I guess we'll use prepend because we want it to go above the form and not below it. So I can just do prepend feedback and hit save on that and it uh, looks like I have a semicolon I gotta add here and hit save and this should work now so let's go back into our preview URL and refresh this and let me just close this inspector and open up our form fill out my contact info and send a message and boom there we go no page refresh and we get our feedback thank you we'll get back to you soon how nice is that so there's one thing though it popped up kind of fast it would be nice if it was a little animation if we could make it fade in and we can do that easily since we've already got jQuery here we can just hide it before it gets shown. So here, this little snippet will call hide on it, and this will just basically append a display none class to it. And then, now that it's hidden, we want to reveal it after we've appended it. So we're basically adding this invisible div 
to the form and then after it's been added we'll call fade in on it and <clears throat> this is the nice thing about jQuery there's just such short little methods to do nice little things like this so let's refresh that and check it out boy I feel bad for the uh, system administrator they're really getting a lot of spam from us here let's give a message spam master 5000 boom you see that fade in pretty nice it's still a little fast I think we could slow it down we can pass in a uh, milliseconds here we'll pass in 1500 milliseconds let's slow it down a little bit um, another thing you might notice here is that even though we've submitted all our form values are still there what if I had another message I would have to delete um, the message manually and maybe it's for a different person so I want to I don't want to assume that all this information is the same we should really just clear it out and there, there's a couple ways we could do this we could manually um, go in and select each input value and set its value back to zero but there's actually a kind of a quicker way of doing it as well it's kind of fun it's a really old school um, method on the regular um, form object itself and it's called reset and the way we can do that is since we have this form selected here um, it's currently a jQuery object but we can always access the underlying um, DOM element by just um, passing in this uh, array zero here and basically this will give us the form object itself and then we can call the native reset method on it and this will just clear out all the values in its inputs and this is a very old cross-browser compatible little method it's kind of a neat trick and now when I fill this out I can fill my info this is the last one I promise and hit send. Oh, look at that nice slow fade in. And as you can see, the form values are now all clear. Well, I hope you had fun with this tutorial. I know I did. This is really applicable to not just web pop sites, but any sites. This is a nice improvement on the user experience to not have the page refresh and really gives a nice finish to your apps and websites. I hope you'll join me for the next episode. Thanks for watching.